Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I'm trying my hand at writing a Demon Slayer fanfiction. Uh, Demon Slayer is an anime that I would call um, Boku no Hero with a little bit more blood. Yeah, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, why not check it out if you haven't seen it? If you have seen it, you'll probably like the story. Again, I never wrote one before. I hope I hit... Uh, all the right notes that people want in a Demon Slayer fanfic. Uh, but before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, watch the video until the end, and uh, maybe watch it twice. Please, I need money. I'm playing Genshin Impact. Please help me feed my gacha addiction, please. I also have a Patreon. Just saying. Please support me. I need Kiki, please! And to give you an extra incentive to go to my Patreon or merch store to give me money to it so I can spend it on Gacha, I'm bringing back the cute animal picture of the day. This is the cute animal picture of the day. Yay! Also, if you're new here and think I'm worth it, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks. Bye. And enjoy the show. It had started like any other day. Before the first rays of the sun, you awoke your grandmother, prepared breakfast, followed by your daily chores. It wasn't until late in the evening, when three travelers knocked on your door, when this ordinary day turned interesting. You and your family owned an inn alongside an old trading route. It wasn't uncommon for late-night travelers to arrive at your doors. However, when you came to greet them, you realized that all three of them were in a very bad shape. My apologies for intruding at such an hour, but we need assistance now, said one of them. He had brown hair and was bleeding from a wound on his arm. You, however, were frozen in shock, until only seconds later your grandmother appeared next to you. The old lady, despite her rather sweet appearance, was a dragon. So when she put on her sweetest voice to speak to the men, you almost shouted profanities. Ah, uh, it's been a while since Slayers rested here. Do not be afraid, we will take good care of you. The old woman looked at you. Don't be such a lazy wench. Get these boys inside. We need to treat their wounds. Ah, there was your grandmother. You wondered how far they must have gotten with wounds like this. Especially the weird one with the pig mask. It seemed as if half of his torso was ripped open. You would get nightmares just imagining the pain he must be in right now. Once inside, your grandmother left with the pig-masked man and the third slayer, a blonde guy who was still unconscious, in one of the back rooms, leaving you only with the instruction to help the remaining slayer. You were by no means a doctor or nurse, and your knowledge of wound treating was less than basic. Still, you tried. You led the boy into a side room where you brought a bucket of water and a clean towel. I'm sorry, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. You apologized in advance to him, and he chuckled while taking off his coat. It's fine. He inhaled sharply from the pain. Just need a bit of cleaning up, some bandages. He paused and looked away. After all... I'm not as hurt as the others. You nodded, and with a mild blush began cleaning the man's wound. His arm twitched whenever the cold towel rubbed over the wound on his arm. You felt like crying. Was this really all there is to wound cleaning? Were you missing something? Were you killing him? In an attempt to not get over-emotional, 
You tried small talk. With a curious undertone, you asked, So, how did this happen? You asked. He sighed and gave you a reassuring smile. Well, we're demon slayers, and we were on a mission. To slay demons. He paused and looked mournfully at the ground. Well, as it turns out, this demon wasn't alone. There were four of them. He paused while you stood up to get bandages from a cabinet. Well, technically four. This monster could create clones of himself, and we needed to figure out who was the original. Long story short, the demon is no more, and now we're here. You finished wrapping up his arm. Any other wounds? You asked with a void expression, and he shook his head. No, just probably some bruises. It's just... I don't know how I managed to not get quite as hurt as my friends. He gave you a soft smile. Thank you. My name is Tanjiro Kamado, by the way. Smiling in return, you told him yours. Huh. That's an unusual name. You giggled. <laughs> my father was a traveler from another country, so when I was born, him and my mother decided I should have the same name as his great-grandmother. Smiling softly, you added, They died a few years ago to an illness. Now it's just me and my grandmother and an employee taking care of this place. Ugh, the guy's pretty lazy, however, so... So... It really is just me and my grandmother taking care of the inn. Interesting, said Tanjiro. With wounds like this, we probably have to stay a couple of days. So that's okay. You chuckled in response. <laughs> no worries, Mr. Kamado. Despite the inn being built uh, at a trade route, most people only stay for a few drinks before going back on the road. So we're pretty much always empty. Behind you, you heard the shuffling noise of an opening door. Your grandmother, kimono covered in blood, entered. She was smiling, however, and you let out a squeak. The two boys will come through, don't be afraid, she said to Tanjiro. I hope the little wench has taken good care of you. He chuckled with mild embarrassment. <laughs> yes, she did a good job cleaning the wound and bandaging it. Still hurts, though. Your grandmother nodded. It will take a while for the other two boys to be travel ready. You can stay here if you'd like. Now the old lady pointed at you. Show him to his room, wench. You sighed. Yes, grandma. Quietly, Tanjiro followed you through the halls of the inn, occasionally grunting, since his arm still hurt. Quietly, you opened the door to your right. The room was empty and clean. Perfect. The boy set a wooden box that you hadn't noticed until now on the ground, before yawning. You were about to leave, but... The hand of his unharmed arm gently touched your shoulder. I can't thank you enough. He smiled. You suppressed a chuckle before answering. Well, how about you thank me by... You're interrupted by the box suddenly shaking. Uh, pets really aren't allowed in here. I mean, we do make exceptions for small dogs sometimes, but... The box now swung open completely and a girl tumbled out of it. With a heavy blush, the boy spoke up. That's Azuko, my sister. He was probably just as embarrassed by this situation as you found it awkward. The girl, Nezuko, slowly got on her feet and then tilted her head while staring at, at both you and Tanjiro. What's the deal with the bamboo? You asked while pointing at her face. The boy sighed. Uh, this is going to be a lot, he muttered, and you raised an eyebrow. 
I have all night. He giggled. <laughs> well, she is the reason I became a demon slayer and my motivation to find a cure. Slowly, the girl approached you and you stretched out a hand. I'm guessing this means she is a demon? You asked, more interested in this entire situation to be afraid. Not to mention, if he was traveling with his demon sister and she wasn't restrained, she wasn't dangerous, right? Nezuko booped her head under your hand and you began slowly stroking through her hair. Oh, I think she likes me, you said with a soft smile. Tanjiro, on the other hand, just sighed in relief. <sighs> Usually when people realize what she is, they just start screaming, running away, and... Well, then I have to explain everything, and it's always really awkward. <laughs> you scratch the back of your head. I mean, I don't know anything about demons. Up until just a few seconds ago, I thought they didn't exist. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't travel with her if she was dangerous to others, so... I guess that's why I'm calm right now. Nezuko made a noise similar to the purring of a cat. Oh, she's adorable. Tanjiro smiled. But I must admit, I do have... A lot of questions now, you said with a grin. How about you thank me by answering all of my questions? The boy chuckled before saying, <laughs> Ask away. He could tell by the sparkle in your eyes that this would take all night. Not that he minded, of course. <laughs>